How many of you have spent any kind of time puzzling over the idea of the unpardonable sin? Yeah? Uh, well, so, so it's got to be an awful thing if God won't forgive you for it. So what are the awful things? And some might wonder, okay, so how about adultery? How about murder? Well, that can't be it. In fact, David was guilty of both of those things. This one who has a heart after God's own heart can't be, can't, well, what about suicide? Well, that doesn't necessarily seem quite right either. What, and then we go back to the texts of Scripture. Find your way to Matthew if you want to follow along with me. Matthew and verse, or chapter 12, verse 31 says this interesting thing. And so I tell you, this would be in red letters, this would be Jesus talking. And so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. By the way, what is it that's just happened? What's just happened, Jesus has been preaching and teaching, and the Pharisees, the rulers, they have said about Jesus that there is a demon in him. He is demon-possessed for what he is doing. And so Jesus' response to this claim that he is demon-possessed is to say, you know, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven of men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, like saying that I am a demon-possessed person, can still be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. What is this blasphemy of the Spirit. What is this thing that cannot be forgiven? One of my favorite verses on this subject, which it seems like maybe it's on this subject anyway, comes from 1 John chapter 1. Do you recall this verse? 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So it becomes kind of a simple math question. If God is faithful to forgive us of anything we would confess, and there is something that He will not forgive us of. It must then therefore be what? Something we would not confess. And we begin to wonder, is it possible that there is some relational space, something happening with God that we could break down in such a way that we could get to the point that we wouldn't confess? It would seem to fit, then, the idea of the unpardonable sin if, in fact, God is faithful and just to forgive us of any unrighteousness we would confess, that if we broke ourselves somehow so that we could not hear the Holy Spirit, whose job it is to cause us, call us to confession and to a place of salvation, that we could actually get to a place that we would never confess. And what is it that does that? I wonder if the almost could do that. Someone in this room has heard about the saving grace of Jesus Christ and you have felt the pull, but you've thought, you know what, let me study longer, let me think a little harder, let me talk about that later. And almost. Maybe you have struggled in a slightly different way. You've said yes to Jesus Christ, but there's sin in your life that you've confessed and sin in your life that seems to reappear and reemerge. And I don't know if you've wondered if you could do just the right thing or just do it enough times that finally Jesus would say, enough, I'm not showing up for you anymore, it's over. Kind of like that wedding scenario where you're standing at the front of the church and the doors open and there's no bride there. Interestingly, by the way, in this metaphor we share, who is the bride? In the scriptural metaphor, the bride is not Jesus. The bride is me. He's the bridegroom. What if it actually works the other way around? What if the problem of sin in our lives is not that we would commit something that Jesus would stop showing up for us, but that as we embrace sin, as we don't confess it, as we wrap ourselves in it, as we become comfortable with it, it breaks down our receptors of the Holy Spirit. And the big, the big danger problem is that it will convince us to be the one who doesn't show up. Jesus always shows up. And He is faithful no matter what you've ever done. He will forgive. But if you live, if I live the almost life, putting Him off, waiting for another day, 
Could there come a point we could so damage ourselves so as not to be able to hear the Holy Spirit plead? Hi, I'm Dave Ferguson. I'm the pastor of the Collegedale Church here on the campus of Southern Adventist University. You know, it seems to me this world is a mess, more than ever. And in the midst of it, the questions that are boiling up, we wonder, does Jesus have anything relevant to say about the problem in my life, the difficulty you're struggling with? I think he does. And I'd like to welcome you to subscribe to this YouTube channel as we explore the relevance of Jesus Christ in the everyday life of you and me. So subscribe. Click the button.